couple announcements, and then we have some, some coming from the congregation. Uh, if you have been uh, collecting books for Lindsay Johnson, um, we have a box for them down by the office. Uh, Lindsay will be in prison for the next five years. We're trying to help out as best we can. Anytime somebody goes to visit, she can take visits from her parents, and I can go as many times as I want. But she can get nine visits. She's allowed to get five paperback books, magazines, newspapers, anything like that with each visit. After she's done reading them, she is able then to pass them out within the, within the whole system. So once they get cleared to get to her, they're okay for everybody. So we're going to put little, uh, little plates in them saying, a gift from your friends at St. Peter's Church, you're in our prayers, and hopefully, you see what, 9 times 5 is 45. Uh, Jim, what's 45 times 5 years? A lot. A lot. Okay, we'll go with a lot. How's that? <laughs> You just happened to be the first person I saw, Jim, so you need to sit behind people. That's, that's the way it works. So, uh, so we're going to try to uh, to uh, help out her and all those others that are incarcerated uh, following Jesus' dictate to, to do those that, uh, that are in prison and to reach out to them. Uh, if you have anything for the key, it is due on August, uh, this coming Friday, August 25th. Uh, we're looking for volunteers for Fall Fest parking. Uh, the sign-up sheets are downstairs. Uh, please, please, please go down. Uh, for those that are new, and just as a reminder, we raise anywhere from ten to twelve thousand dollars with our parking. Uh, that goes into the general fund, so that's a pretty, pretty good chunk for us to have. In order for this to really work well, we need as many volunteers as possible to cover all the shifts, uh, so that the same people don't have to cover three, four, and five shifts. All, all you have to do is stand there, take people's money, and smile. <laughs> or point them to places to park. For that one, you don't have to smile, so that might be easier for some people. So I don't know, think, figure out where your gifts lie, uh, but sign up because uh, we need as many people as we can get. Also, with Fall Fest, we, uh, we collect water uh, in the little bottles for the people that will be working, and then we also have it for sale for people that are that are going to the festival, we're coming, uh, coming back, so if you can help us out with donations of water, that would be great. I think that's all I have. Are there any other announcements that need to be brought up for the good of the congregation?
as we open our hearts and our minds to be filled and led by God's Holy Spirit.
Merciful God, thank you for gathering us in your grace and love this day. Bless us with compassion and understanding that we may be people of forgiveness and acceptance. Strengthen us with the power of your Holy Spirit that we may be unified in mercy and grace for all. In Christ's mercy and grace we pray. Amen. I would now invite you to turn to those around you passing the peace of Christ on this glorious and beautiful day. Their lives in harm's way for 
for us every day. Lord, in your mercy, uh, lastly, I, uh, I received a call, uh, Kathleen Oriavitas, Eileen Hawk's sister, uh, has been diagnosed with stage 4 pancreatic cancer. Obviously, the family has gone through an unbelievable loss and an unbelievable time over the last few years, uh, and, and now they have this to, uh, to be dealing with us. So we want to keep uh, Kathleen's family and the Hawk family in our thoughts and prayers as they, uh, as they deal with this, uh, with this new burden that they have in their lives. We pray that she may find peace and comfort in God's presence in her lives and the lives of all those that will be reaching out and caring for her. So Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. So somebody please have something positive. I do. I want to have prayers for our friend Barb. We've known her through Bethel for years. She's got medical problems, and I hope the doctors come up with the right answers. So for Barb, the Lord in your mercy, hear our prayers. I am a definite joy. Yesterday, my brother Dale hosted a party for my family and his family. And we had eight children, four down to two. And we never had a tear. It was wonderful. <laughs> so that many little ones is a joy or a concern? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at Bob's face, I'm seeing a different thing here. <laughs> that, that is wonderful. That is wonderful. Lord, your mercy.
with her church family and to celebrate. She thinks about thinks about him at least every Sunday during the time that, uh, that we're gathering for worship, and, uh, and is trying to find a way that she can be here on a more more regular basis uh, to share with uh, to share with her family and friends here at St. Peter's Church. So, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Well, seeing nothing else, then I would invite us to uh, to bow our heads to take these, uh, these concerns and these joys that we have shared together. To take the concerns and the joys that, that I know each one of us have in our hearts and that we choose to share privately and quietly with God. So let us now bow our heads and be in a time and a spirit of prayer. <coughs>
All in one, we lift this prayer up to you this morning as we have shared with you our many concerns and joys. Those given voice and, and those brought to you quietly in private. We bring them all to you when we pray together in one voice. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now hear these words from Matthew's Gospel. Then Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defies a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defies. Then the disciples approached him and said to him, do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? And he answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind, guide, <coughs> blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into the pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Then Jesus said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and then goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart. And this is what defies. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, and slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands, that does not defile. Hear what the Spirit says to the church. So in the, the original text of Matthew's Gospel, in the Greek, uh, Jesus is much more direct. He says that, do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and then goes into the latrine? He's making very clear of what he thinks of, of people that are that way and people that act out that way. He's saying that the laws, the laws of the Torah, which Jesus said repeatedly he did not come to do away with, but he came to fulfill and to help understand. Jesus is saying here, as he does many times, we need to look at these laws and and relate to them to, to people's lives. What does it mean? Can you just eat kosher and then basically do or say whatever you want and get a pass because you kept that law? I think Jesus was very clearly saying, no, that's not the way it is. Jesus is saying it's not what comes in, but rather it's what goes out. So you can, well, you can eat anything you want, and it's not going to make you a bad person. But it's what you say, and more importantly, what you do that is going to, to put on display the choices that you truly make, that people can really see and understand what is in your heart. I really don't know how Jesus could have made 
made it any clearer than this. Now this year, 2017, we are celebrating not only our anniversary, but the 500th anniversary of the Protestant Reformation. It was on All Hallows Eve that Martin Luther nailed his 95 thesis onto the door of the church at Wittenberg and put into, started up, what leads us to us today. Standing up and saying the laws and the rules and the dictates of the church are all well and good. The tradition, that's nice, but how do you live these things? That's what's important. See, Marty turned to this scripture and he, he said, well, see, it's saying right here that Jesus is talking about the words that go out. So it's what you say. It's the creed that you profess that determines whether or not you are understood and viewed as truly Christian. Now, he made a number of mistakes in his interpretation of the scriptures. And I think this was by far one of the biggest. Because then all of a sudden Christianity, it changed. And for the most part, there's always, always, always going to be exceptions. But for the most part, especially we as Protestants, we have become a people of word more than people of actions. People are defined as Christian by what they profess. Do you know the words to the right creeds? Do you, do you believe in this? Do you believe in that? And that, I think, as Jesus is very clear here, on how you live, excuse me, how you live the words and the creeds that you profess. Each one of us, each one of us, has sung these beautiful songs, we've, we've lifted up these prayers and, and more prayers that we will lift up during the rest of the service, and we will go out and we will be feeling like, woohoo, we did it. In reality, I think, I know, God is looking down and saying, okay, that's great. Y'all know the Lord's Prayer. You can do, you know, you can cover up, you know, you can do your eyes closed and get it right. Now, how many of us are really living it? You can sing the songs and the hymns that give thanks and praise to God and to Christ. But how often do we go out and before we hit Center Street, or Ash, if you're going this way, because you got to hit one, unless you go down the alleyway, I guess. So we'll throw the alleyway. Before we get far at all, we've already thrown them to the wind and shown by our actions that, that these are words and platitude for for the hour or so on Sunday morning, but that they really have no impact or effect on our day-to-day our -day existence as individuals, as a gathering body of faith, as a nation, or as a world. Jesus is being very clear. I, I, I don't see where, I, I don't understand, because Martin Luther, I mean, he was a pretty smart guy. He knew a lot of stuff. So I read his stuff on this scripture. It's like, Mari, how did he get so dumb? Now, see, I know he's wrong because, well, quite frankly, I don't agree with him. So that gives one of two choices. Martin Luther, the father of the Protestant Reformation, is wrong. Or I'm wrong. Dolores, who wins? No doubt. <laughs> Dolores knows it's me. 
Okay, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Have you got something to share with the whole class, Mr. White? <laughs> It's, it's here in as black and white as we can possibly get it. Do we want to make choices that, that lead to the metaphorical latrine of life? Or do we want to make choices? Do we want those choices to be known through our, our voices? through our words, but more importantly, through our actions and through our deeds. That's what God is looking for. Now, the other problem that many of us have, I'm going to read the list to you again. Evil and well, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, and slander. My guess is the vast majority of us can look at that list and say, I'm pretty safe. I haven't done any of that stuff, at least not the big stuff. Mm -hmm and feel like we're okay. See, the, the problem is that when we, when we take passages like this out of the context of Jesus' message and the Gospels, is that they really lose their, their significance. Jesus said many times, many times, anything that, that puts us in, in opposition with the will of God is a sin. And little things become sin. So we might not have ever murdered anybody, but as Jesus said, I tell you, not just don't murder, but don't even think bad of your brother and sister. And don't even ever, ever call him a doofus or a weenie. <laughs> now, I know, I know, every one of us here at one time or another in our lives have looked at somebody and said, you are a real doofus or a weenie. And I have a pretty good guess that all the women that are married know exactly who he is headed to. <laughs> and if, if the people that she said it to I have half a brain, the first thing out of their mouth was, I'm sorry, dear. <laughs>
followed by a time of, of reflection, usually up on the mountain. And I can only guess that when Jesus went up there, his first prayer was, Father, please forgive me. I know, I know I shouldn't have called the names and berated them, but I just couldn't take it anymore. Please forgive me. And he came down from the mountain forgiven. He also didn't let those, those minor failures keep him from really striving to follow the call that God had laid on his heart and his spirit. So that he was eventually able to follow the path that led to persecution, crucifixion, and then resurrection. So I know, I know that even when we mess up, we can still move on. We can still be forgiven. We can still allow our, our words, but more importantly, our actions and our deeds to show who we really are. So my prayer, my prayer for each and every one of us as individuals, especially as a congregation, is that we will, we will begin to really listen to the words that we say, to the words that we read, to the words that we share. That they not be just, just empty platitudes that are, are lifted up on Sunday between 9.30 and but that we take them into our hearts, we take them into our minds and spirits, and we allow them to lead our lives. Jesus, Jesus has told us what's expected of us. And Jesus has given the example. So my hope and prayer is that we individually, we as a congregation, that we might be known, not by what we say, but by how we live what we say, so that we get to the point where we don't have to say anything, but when people see who we are, when they see how we live, they know. They know we are shadow down who we are, and most importantly, who's we are. Amen. I would now invite all that are able to please stand as we join together in hymn number 552, My Faith Looks Up to Thee.
Christ's gracious name we pray. Amen. Now let us join together in our closing hymn, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy, found on page 486.